This video explains how to compute the sample size when you're doing probability proportional to size sampling. This kind of sampling is also called monetary unit sampling, so those are two terms for the same activity. This is the problem we're going to solve in this sample, in this example. This problem is available to you in D2L. You are auditing accounts receivable for Becker Construction. The client's book value is $10 million and materiality is $750,000. The point of this sample is to identify the number and which subsidiary balances will be confirmed with accounts receivable confirmation letters. At the end of the sample, the auditors try to determine whether they believe the book value of $10 million is misstated by more than $750,000. If we think the balance is misstated by more than that materiality limit, we ask the client to make corrections in what it has recorded. If we believe the book value is not misstated by more than the materiality limit of $750,000, we will accept the balance as fairly stated. It doesn't have to be perfect, in other words. The risk of incorrect acceptance in PPS sampling is the concept that it's possible at the end of sampling for us to accept the client balance as fairly stated when in fact that's an incorrect answer. We should be asking the client to make changes. This is also called detection risk, this kind of problem. For this sample problem, the risk of incorrect acceptance is set at 15%, and that drives some of the calculations we're about to do. Prior audits of this company have shown that the expected is that's the total error in all of the subsidiary balances combined. So one could be off by 70,000, and all the others off by a combined, by a combined 5,000, and the balance would be wrong by 75,000. Now let's look at the sampling interval computation. We start with the auditor's specification of materiality. That's 750,000. The auditors also have specified in the audit program what the expected misstatement is. But now we have these two table factors. First, let's see what the top half of this equation is computing. We're taking materiality and we're reducing it. And we're not just reducing it by the amount that we expect the misstatement to be. We're reducing it by an expanded version. That's what this ex error expansion factor is for. So our expectation of the error at 75,000 might be too low. That's what this is basically telling us. Your expectation might be too low, so we're going to multiply it by something from a table. And then we're not leaving the sampling interval just at that computation. We are reducing the sampling interval by, because we're going to divide by a reliability factor from a table. For this kind of sampling, the table you need is in your book. It's Exhibit 8.7. This column that we're going to use is determined by the detection risk at 15%. These are the two table factors you need to complete this problem. So the error expansion factor is 1.4 and the reliability factor is 1.90. That means the sampling interval is 750,000, which is materiality, minus what we expect the error to be expanded by this conservatism factor, all divided by this, rel this reliability factor. This gives us a sampling interval of 339,000, sorry, 339,473.70 if you do the math. 
So if you re remember from the PPS introduction slides, this is the multiple of the dollars that we'll use, or the comp obviously the computer hopefully would use, in looking for which items to put in the sample. Now, we would like to know what the sample size is so we know approximately how many letters we'll send. When you comp compute the sample size, the sample size is the population, how many total items there are, divided by the sampling interval, or in other words, it's the account balance divided by the sampling interval. And for this problem, it's $10 million divided by 339000 four hundred and seventy three dollars and seventy cents and you come out with a little over twenty nine you come out with twenty nine point four six but we cannot have a partial item in our sample so the sample size can't be twenty nine point four we'll use thirty one last comment is that this is the highest the sample size can be. This is the maximum sample size. If there was a balance that was bigger than the $339,000 sampling interval, the balance could have two attempts to hook it into the sample. If there was a $5 million balance, it would have many, many hooks into gathering it into the sample, and we'd still only test it once. So for this sample, the sample size will be 30 or fewer.